Christian Moon, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Christian, I think there's something that the Clone Club needs answered right now, for once and for all. Uh-oh. Where does Donnie do his underwear shopping? Because, <laughs> because the guy's in his underwear a lot, but it's like the least sexy underwear. They're like tidy whities but they're kind of baggy in places. They're not supposed to be baggy. Frumpy. Just really frumpy. We call those droopy draws, right? Yeah. <laughs> Droopy draws. You droopy, got droopy draws. Droopy draws on right now? Droopy draws I are us. That's a cartoon character. <laughs> no, that's Droopy Dog. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> that's, that's the character. If my underwear was a character, that would be it. I think Allison might buy his underwear. I, yeah. I think that's totally it. I guess that's what Allison likes. Yeah, she's into it. God love her. Uh, John and Graham, you guys actually had uh, some scenes with Donnie in the finale that you had to cut out that people can see on the DVD and Blu-ray. I don't know if you guys have checked that out yet, but tell them about, we can see Donnie trying to do a little blackmailing, right? Uh, yeah, it's true, actually. We, um, we obviously, uh, we ended uh, the finale with, uh, we had a lot of material, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, Christian, I'm sorry. Oh. Christian didn't make it uh, to uh, to Aaron uh, and uh, in episode ten, and so we Broke my heart. we finished the scenes though, and we put them on the DVD because they're awesome, and because you're awesome. And, thanks, uh, thanks, boss. And, um, and it's really uh, you know Donnie taking charge. Really, is what those scenes are all about. If you want to see Donnie try and get his <laughs> monitor ex expenses back from Rachel, you should check out the DVD. <laughs> So there's a little treat for you on the on the DVD, so check that out. Uh, yeah, it is cool. You guys should check it out if you haven't already. All right, another Twitter question. This one from Ta for Tatiana from at Greek Mythology. Uh, it's an interesting one. Which deceased clone do you wish you would have more time had had more time to interact with? I guess you got three to choose from, right? You got Beth, Katya, Jennifer, who we saw this year in the videos. Uh, any of those that you really wish you could uh, could have had more time? I'd like to try uh, like go back to all of them. I mean, I think Jennifer would be quite an interesting character. She's sort of, uh, yeah, we, we got a very small glimpse of her, but weirdly we sort of saw her whole life in, you know, three sequences. And it was, we shot that in pre-production, like before camera. And it was this weird day of shooting this woman's life and then losing her at the end, you know? So it might be quite interesting to go back to her. But Beth, I think, is, is uh, a fascinating to, you know, she's got everything. Some, she's got so many, you know, clues to the. I don't know what she's got. She's got something. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's what I got the cool most. Ass. When I put out there, that's what the most people wanted to know. I mean, here's one from the at the, the Archer Ballet. I don't know what that means. Uh, and, <laughs> and asking, and, and a lot of people ask, are we ever going to see Beth's backstory? John Graham, any chance of a flashback episode or anything like that? The flashback. <laughs> um, nothing is off the table. <laughs> we are, we are, I mean, we've talked about Beth's story uh, as part of the mythology of the series for, since the beginning, and we're both fabulously interested in Beth's story, and I, I think that um, at some point, at some point, uh, there, there's a, there is a definite chance that we may see that, don't you think, Grant? I think that there's probably a twist on what happened with Beth that we don't know yet. yet. Well, there's definitely a twist. Uh, where did Beth and Paul have their first date, guys? Just, I'm just curious. <laughs> That's the big mystery. That's the big mystery. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Johnny Rock. It's killing me. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say sh Shake Shack. Were you really? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was. It was Denny's <laughs> Grand Slam breakfast. <laughs> Uh, we got a uh, Twitter question from at Punk Miss Inny. Uh, can we see more of Tony? And can he meet the other clones here? Tony was the trans clone character we met this season. I know you guys were all really excited to introduce him, even knowing he might be a divisive character and people may have strong feelings one way or the other. Uh, what do you guys think? Would you like to bring him back and that spectacular mullet? Uh, maybe in the season of the I, I, I I oh, love Tony. I would love to explore him further. I think we, you know, got the very littlest bit of him. And uh, he just offers so much as far as identity and, and um, you know, gender identification and exploration and, and expression. And, you know, our show's about that. Our show's about individuals and about people and, and how they express themselves. And so he offers all of that. But at the same time, he's, you know, 
he's sort of singular in the in the sense, you know, his mullet and his, <laughs> you know, he's just this guy who I've I've never seen on screen and I've never read that guy on on a page and I, I was so excited by him and by the interaction with Felix yes. and and by the conversation that he prompted, whether it be a polar, I, I think polarizing is the only way we're going to start talking and the only way we're going to start understanding each other and you know. Find, finding out, the, coming to, to understanding it, I think, and, and telling trans stories and, and having trans actors in those parts, it's part of just getting, getting the stories out there. And having, having, a, having a debate that's polarized, polarized is so much better than not having the debate at all. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and who, says, who says that art has to be something that you are innately comfortable with all the time? When something makes yeah. you uncomfortable or it makes you think, why is su why suddenly is that not a good thing? Why I I am fairly certain, or at least the way that I think about art is that it can make you feel warm and fuzzy. It can make you think. It can make you uncomfortable. It so long as it moves you in some way, that's artistic. So we accomplished exactly what we set out to and do. And I I think Felix changed so much by meeting mm -hmm. Tony. We've talked a lot about um, the mirror, the sort of way that Tony kind of goes. Look at yourself, man. Like we're the same. You think you you're know? special. You think you've got. You think yeah. you can evade me. You think me. you can, you know, play this game in front of me, and I'm not going to see through it. And and so they sort of really have this equality and this sort of tete a tete. Yeah, which yeah. is. I'd also like Mrs. S well. to meet <laughs> Tony because <laughs> um, I think that Mrs. S would understand his um, rebelliousness and and spirit and and strive for identity, but she also has a lot of conversations she needs to have with them about table manners and stuff. <laughs> Washing under his fingernails. Yeah, I would love to see Mrs. S and Tony just hanging out, <laughs> having whiskeys for an evening and like chatting. That'd be the best. John, Graham, anything you guys want to add to that? Well, uh, I only, you know, you know, my favorite part of that was the super hot kiss. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, you know, it kind of, it was a little weird. It was a little weird, but super hot. And, and now, are you asking to kiss Maria, too? What? <laughs> is Tony asking to is kiss Tony Maria? Is Tony asking to kiss Maria? That's the question. Yes, yes he is. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one more. This is my favorite question that was sent in from the Clone Club. Uh, Ellie Long asked a question. Where are Cosima's parents? Their daughter is seriously sick. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Graham. <coughs> Where is her family? I guess they're out, they're out in Berkeley. Maybe they're like, just like, they're a little disengaged. <laughs> They don't own a car, so they're like walking really slowly. <laughs> I've always wanted to meet some parents. Well, we've t we've talked actually. We've talked about meeting Allison's mother. Yes. 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 <laughs> Played by Phyllis Stiller. Who would play? <laughs> Who should play Allison's mother? Catherine O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara. Oh, yeah. All right, get on that one. All right, um, or Mimi Rogers. Mimi oh, Rogers. Yes. Uh, we're going to get to uh, your questions in just a minute, because I know, oh, there they go, they're already getting up. Because um, they, they love to interact with the Clone Club, but first, before we do, check out this fun clip featuring some of the memorable moments from Season 2 of Orphan Black. Check it out.